Okay, greetings, family. Welcome. I want to thank you for your patience. I don't know if everyone may want to come closer so they can hear you since you don't have a microphone. Oh, I got a microphone. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Let the microphone work. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, well, we do have a few seats in the back. If you want to come closer, you're welcome. As always, we're thankful for your safe arrival back to the motherland, Ghana. We want to thank you for having the strength and the courage and the wisdom to come home. So give yourself a round of applause for coming home and being your home. My name is David Jawara. Um, I'm the um, coordinator of the citizenship workshop and the, um, the investment conference, which is coming on tomorrow. So we're happy to have you here. We're happy also um, that our brother Bumani continue to stand strong. Um, he seemed to have a lot of energy, and we're thankful that he had that energy to keep fighting, to help organize these tours. And we're also thankful to our big brother, Dr. Milana, who is going to um, be lecturing and giving you information on citizenship. So um, we're not going to, I'm not going to talk long, uh, but I do like to recognize some of the um, elders that has been around. Our brother Chief Momo is here. We'll say peace and blessings to our elders. If you're, over, if you're over 65, we also like to ask permission to continue. For anyone that's over 65 we, or 70, we'd like to ask your permission and your blessing to continue as our elders. Y'all got it. Okay, so again, we are thankful. We like to, before we bring on Dr. Dr. Milana, just want to give you a little brief overview on him. I met him in 1990 when I came to Ghana. And in 1990, Ghana was under President Rollins. It was a military state. It was a, a military state, okay? It was ruled by a dictator. It was a uh, military state. Um, before then, there was chieftaincy in Africa. Africa has always been governed by certain kinds of um, rulers. But Dr. Milan was consistent in pushing Pan-African. He was working at the Du Bois Center. Wonderful daughter that he raised. And he was just telling me how great she is today. He was blessed to be recognized by the Ghana government to give citizenship based on his work. So let's give him a round of applause for pushing and helping us to give citizenship. And to show you how grateful I am, because through his effort, I was able to get citizenship in 2019. And having citizenship after over 25 years without it, Believe me, it's the difference between night and day. I've had people, a uh, person, to try to deport me when I wasn't a citizen. Um, unfortunately, they failed because, you know, truth will never let a lie defeat you. So the truth set me free from being deported. But I got citizenship now. That's the thing of the past. They got to come another way now. So without further ado, let me bring my brother, my friend, and the one that's going to help you get citizenship in Ghana, Dr. Milan. Yes, a big applause to everybody here tonight. Some of you, I know, it probably is the first time you've been to Africa or Ghana, and we give you a big applause and tree that is welcome to Ghana. Um, Yes, what Davi just said briefly is extremely important for you to understand. Uh, citizenship is an issue here where I think it is much more relevant today to Africans of the diaspora, particularly African Americans. And I know I'm from California and I've been living in the inner city and I know that was the farthest thing away from my mind about 25, 30 years ago and maybe even today. But things have changed in the United States of America for the worse. 
And I think everybody in here knows this. And it's extremely important that Africans of the diaspora, particularly in the United States of America, have a plan B. If anything breaks out in America and they declare martial law, do you have a plan B on how you're going to get out? No, you don't, but you can check with Irish Americans, you can check with Italian Americans, they can go back to Italy, they can go back to Ireland. But African Americans, where will you go? If you have no place to go, they will finish you. So you must look to Africa. And I must say, we have worked extremely hard with African governments over the decades, and I'm not the only one. There were many that came before me and alongside me is try to sensitize African government to let them know that their children had been kidnapped through slavery and taken to a foreign land, spending over 400 plus years there and treated like dogs. And now you see policemen shooting our people down in the streets and it's going to get worse. So you must now look at Africa and African leadership. Governments now are more sensitized and now they are saying, come home, come home. So my presentation tonight is, I don't want to talk with a, a whole lot of unnecessary things. I just want to get to the point. You haven't chosen to come to visit Ghana. I'm sure you have a specific reason for that, every one of you individually and collectively. But what I do want to keep in the forefront of your mind is that things are changing so fast in the world and me being from the U.S., obviously, I have a soft spot in my heart for the children who are trapped there and cannot get out. So I am saying to you that you should pay very, very close attention to looking at Ghana and what I'm going to tell you tonight. And what I am walking you through is a process. The process is, first of all, it's understood, you just can't pack up and leave everything in America and just, you know, immigrate here. We understand that, you can't do that. But what you can do, you can go what we say here, small, small, step by step by step. And that's what you need to be doing, is putting a plan in action. You know what I mean? Uh, a rescue plan for every dollar that you have, you should put 10 cents aside for an emergency. Don't emergencies come up? And it ain't no time when, when you're in the midst of an emergency to start saying, well, what am I going to do? You, you must already have your plan B in motion. You can't be calling the Ghana Embassy during an emergency say, can I get a visa to go to Ghana? <laughs> you can't be calling Delta Airways and, and saying, uh, you know, can I get a ticket or can I buy a ticket on Delta Airways? There's an emergency going on in the U.S. No. These are things you have to have way out in front of you, reserved. And so what is happening right now here in Ghana? Ghana has opened her doors. All of you, I'm sure by now, have heard about the year of return. Mm -hmm. The year of return did not fall from the sky. <laughs> no. The year of return came about as a result of me, people like David, and many others of us, Africans on the diaspora, of the diaspora on the ground, cultivating a relationship with Ghanaians. I myself volunteered, free of charge, 17 consecutive years I taught in residence at the W.E.B. Du Bois Center to educate Ghanaians and other continental Africans who were coming through about the plight of Africans in the diaspora, particularly African Americans because many of them didn't know what we were going through. You know, you know the, the, the European or the white man would tell them one thing about us and then tell us one thing about them, and so we had no kind of connection. But uh, God being so great, the African ancestors being so great, they gave me a platform. And the platform was that I spent 17 years in resident. I was a uh, research fellow with the Ghana National Commission on Culture, probably the first African of the diaspora who did that. They paid me money to study the history of Ghana, where Ghanaians came from, what was the origin of Ghanaians. And you know, you can look at the maps here and see 
that the Ghanaians were the original people of Israel. The Ghanaians were the, uh, the, the original people of Egypt. The Ghanaians were the original people of where you have Syria today, where you have Iraq. Those areas going back 6,000 years before Christ were all black dominated areas. So me having studied that and worked hard to educate Ghanaians, even one of the ones who was a, became a president who came to my class before he was a president. And so by the time he did become a president, it was easy for me to talk to him, you know. But to educate them to who we are. They know now. So the year of return came as a result of the cultivation of works that we were doing with Ghanaian officials to tell them that your children are crying out in the West. They want to come home. But you've got to give them an avenue open for them to come home. Because our people who have been coming, you know, it, it costs you a couple of thousand dollars for you to save up money to come. I have been just looking over the decades. African Americans come with their dashikis, their, their cameras, and, you know, they just come as tourists, leave, spend literally millions of dollars. I said, no, that ain't right. You're not getting nothing for your money. You're not getting nothing, and you're not helping to change the situation or the narrative on the ground here of your mother. What good does it do for you to be a Condoleezza Rice, or Colin Powell, or Barack Obama, wearing the best of clothing, the best of cars, when your mama and your daddy's village is in abject poverty? The world looks at the black man not through what you got in America. They look at the black man and black woman through the lens of Africa. As long as Africa is suffering, they will say, you niggas are not ready. So we have to change the narrative of Africa if we're going to get the respect around the world. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, That's right, you got to change Africa. Because yes, Africa has gotten so deep inside of herself that those who were not captured 500 years ago and didn't go over, as opposed to those who were captured as us who went over, there was a paradigm shift in mentality. <laughs> oh yeah, there was a paradigm shift. You didn't get on that ship and sail on that ship for three months in the middle passage and then get your whipping after you got to the cotton fields of Mississippi and go into that without there being a paradigm shift. And you call Jesus. Jesus didn't come. You call God. didn't come. You came to the realization that God is within you, is within you. So we were strengthened. Whereas our brothers and sisters over here, they didn't go through the fire like we did. They remained. So now that we're coming back, we are black people, but you can see some difference on how we relate to each other. You understand what I'm saying? But it shows that we have the love. And this is extremely important, is to have the love for your mother. Africa is your mama. Africa is your mother. And now the mother who's been crying out for her lost children, the children are returning. And so what we got to do now, we got to come not as tourists. You are not going to change the narrative coming as a tourist. And let nobody tell you you don't have a right to be here. This is nonsense. We have just as much right to be here as any Ghanaian who was born here. My roots and my blood is from this continent. And just like the president who gave us our citizenship, in 2016, this president said, look, I need no praise on what I'm about to give you. I need no praise because I am giving you your right that was taken away from you. Your right to return. You were already a citizen of this continent until someone came and kidnapped you and took you away. And now government realized that. So this is how the year of return came about. When we started the right of return, 
The right of return gave impotence to the year of return. And it started right here with us. And now it's been so sweet that the government doesn't want to let it go. They're talking about beyond the return. Right, right. Beyond the return. So they're opening the doors now for all of us to come home beyond the return. So ladies and gentlemen, what I am saying is that you must have that plan B. You know, you know you got, we don't expect you to just to get up, you got your job, you got your children, your grandchildren there, but at least start planning. If something breaks out, do you have an exit? Or are you just going to sit there and wait till the fire fall on your head? You must have an exit. And Ghana could be your exit. So I am asking you to embrace Ghana. It is we of our organization, Ministry of the Future, is the foremost organization. And I'm not here to be putting myself on a pedestal. I'm just telling you the facts. Because it hasn't been easy. The road hasn't been easy. It took over 30 years to get government to listen. And the advocacy, the educational outreach, study, you know what I mean? Because you get things done when you are consistent. Sustainability is extremely important. We started it, and I said, no, we cannot stop it until we get there. So I'm saying that government now is giving us our citizenship. And Ministry of the Future is the foremost organization that has led the charge and broke the ice in 2016. We got 34. Then in 2019, we got government to sign approval of 232 of our people to get citizenship. And that is still coming off as I speak to you right now. So what I would ask of you, while you are here in Ghana, join Ministry of the Future to get an application with our organization so we can start the processing of you making your way back here. Like I said, small, small, little by little. So if anything happens, you know you have a second home here and Ministry of the Future will secure that for you. We work directly with the Office of the President, Director of Diaspora Affairs, so we're not joking. You know, when we have the record, we have the proof, we have the evidence to show that we are getting the job done. Let me ask you this, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you in the audience right now feel that you are safer today in the United States of America than you were yesterday? Can I get someone to answer that? Sir, you are senior. Can I ask you the question? Do you feel that you are in a safer position in America today than you were yesterday? No. No. Uh, no. Because of the political aspect of things. Mm -hmm. Where you said we were captured, which we were. Kidnapped. We are, yes, kidnapped. We are still being oppressed through other means, in prison, and other situations. We're still slaves in certain ways. Do you think it's going to get any better? No, it not, it's not going to get better until we have a complete overall change. Is that possible? No, not now, not in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. No. Did you hear that? Yes. Yeah. I will ask the next question. Do you think that within the next five years in the United States of America, things will come back to a normal state and that you would feel that you are very secure. Mm -hmm. Madam, can I ask you that question? <laughs> My answer to that is no. Wow. It's never gonna go back to the way it was before. And then when it was before, it was, you weren't safe then. <laughs> so, um, I just think for black people, uh, they just be being tolerated. America is not our home. Never was, never will be. They just tolerate it. 
black and end users. Thank you very much, Madam. Now these are profound statements that are, uh, the, these elders are making right now. And I would say that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Amen. For you to be saying that you're not a small girl, you're up in age like we are, and you've been through the fire, mm -hmm. and you're saying that you don't see it getting any better in America, the United States of America. And obviously, that is the truth. Right. You can see it all over the world, that it's going to get worse before it gets better. But I think the question that you have to ask yourself, what are you going to do today, if not for yourself, for your children or your grandchildren tomorrow? Are you preparing the way for your grandchildren or your children? Mr. Elgin, can I get a question to you on that? Please. <coughs> we have to know what the pulse of the people is. I grew up in a system where they chose Caucasians over blacks in education and sports. Uh, they do the same thing right now in jobs. And I need for my children to be with their people and be safe. So I'm making the necessary changes for them to be able to come home to Africa and change the narrative for them. And for my people being racist. And because the United States is never going to change. Amen. Never. They don't care about us. They're killing us right now, every yeah. day. Every day. Yeah. And it's not going to stop. So it's time for us to come home. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You see like that. Yes. And you as a black person in America, if you think it is going to change, you're just fooling yourself. You're dreaming. You're just fooling yourself. <laughs> you, you, did you hear what the elders said? Yeah. Yes. If you are a black person in America and you think it's going to change, in other words, you say you're fooling yourself. Now, if a young person said that, maybe I would say, yeah, yeah. But for an elder to say that, Charlie, the voice of the people is the voice of God. Amen. It is not going to change. And what you need to be about the business right now, if not for yourself, for your children or your grandchildren, have a plan B in motion. Mm -hmm. And Ministry of the Future can help you to relocate here. We can help you to get your paperwork and everything you need in order. Now, what I would like to do right now, I want to bring someone up who is with the law firm, uh, indigenous law firm, that works with Ministry of the Future to help our brothers and sisters when they're coming home to get their papers straight, resident permit, visas, citizenship. Bishop Loco, please come up. Let me uh, introduce. Give the brother a hand. Come up to the high table. Uh, this man here is with the Quezon Law Firm, and Bishop Loco and I work very close together, my brother. And uh, I would just like you to say a couple of comments to the brothers and sisters. They just arrived. Many of them have just arrived in Africa for the first time. So make it brief, please. Good evening. If you can hear my voice, I can also identify that we are one. Amen. The voice that we are sharing today started way back. Long, long, long ago, like a war drum. But today, the battle has not ended. We are going to fight and continue to fight. You are all welcome. This is your safe haven. Ghana is your safe haven. America cannot change as we all see. And I pray that as you come, you will find yourself in your own land. No paperwork can give you your own coming. God has already designed it. What we are doing with the 
the office of the president. And I want you all to applaud to my brother here. He has worked tirelessly. Every now and then he will call us. That he wants the roadblocks to be removed. So that when you are coming right from the airport, you know that you are coming home. I said, you know you are coming home. You will be separated from the white folks. Right from the airport. I was talking to Dr. Akwe on the, about 30 minutes ago before I arrived here. And today, the office of the president and the parliamentary caucus visited the airport. Very soon, a lot of things are going to change there. So when you arrive, you will have a dignified protocol. It's true. Say it again. I don't think they understand. A dignified protocol. He is saying that the government, with the work that we're doing, they're going to have preferential treatment for the Africans of the diaspora in coming home. That's what he's saying. So, I thank God for your life. And I pray that, like Dr. Malani said, this is the time to let your children know. I appreciate the senior citizen, our mother. They have passed through, and those children need not to pass through. The chocolate that they paste on the biscuit for them to lick is from Ghana. It's from Africa. So why do you reject your own and depend on inferiority, faking, they tell us lies as if they are for us. This is the time. The truth must be told. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see the stage is being set, and it's no joke. We have worked hard with government to sensitize government and the immigration department that we are not going to stand in line to get to Ghana like the Russians, the Chinese, the Lebanese. No, our case is different. The Russian was not kidnapped. We were kidnapped, and I want Ghana to understand that. Most of you don't know. Let me just tell you a little history here about Ghana. Do you understand or know during the peak of slavery that lasted over 400 and some odd years, the Europeans had built 66 slave forts from Senegal all the way down to Angola, 66. I want to pick your mind educationally right now and ask you, of the 66 from Senegal down to Angola, which is near South Africa, how many do you think Ghana had of that 66 slave forts? Can anyone take a guess in here? How many slave forts do you think Ghana had? Around 40, 42. Anyone else want to take a guess? Ghana had 46 of the 66. Now do your mathematics. That means that Either we are from Ghana or we came through Ghana before being taken over to Jamaica, Mississippi, Georgia, all of those coastlines of Carolinas. We either are from here or we came through here. So this is the narrative that we put to government, that Ghana has a moral obligation to bring its children home. Ghana has a moral obligation. And then the other tier, the benefit to Ghana, we have been outside, we have acquired skills, we have acquired knowledge, and nobody knows the white man better than what we know him. We know him. We know him closer than his jugular vein. You understand me? 
so we can come here and build this continent because we built the United States of America. Right. If we built America, why can't we build Africa? So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm saying, you got to start now, not tomorrow. When you get leave Ghana, get off this plane and come back through New York, Atlanta, wherever you go, my sister just said, ain't nothing changing. <laughs> I mean, anytime somebody, look, let me, let me give you an example so you understand the internationalization of diplomacy and law. The reason that they can shoot an African American down like a dog in the streets and then get away with it is because there is no country in the world called African American. And we don't have an ambassador that can file a complaint at the United Nations on our behalf because the American government has the American ambassador there. But if you become a Ghanaian citizen and they shoot you down, the Ghanaian ambassador can file a complaint with the General Assembly and America's butt would be on the hot seat to answer, how can you shoot a person down who is not a citizen of this country and a citizen of Africa or a citizen of Ghana? So I'm saying it's extremely important that you get a sovereign citizenship of a land that identifies the sovereignty of your race. There is no country called, in the United Nations, there is no flag called African American land. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there African American land? No, sir. It doesn't exist. Is there a black American land? No, no sir. But there is an African land. Amen. And we have flags flying at the United Nations. And we have a voice in the United Nations. So I am entreating you to sign up and start the paperwork now while you're here on the road to filing for Ghanaian citizenship by joining Ministry of the Future. Ministry of the Future is our organization. We will take you in as members and accord you all the benefits that we give all of our members on helping you with the relocation process, bringing you up to date on what you need to know in order for you to resettle. Because I know it's not easy to uproot here and then make your way here. So we have in the back our secretary, who is Patience. Would you please, Patience, stand up so they can see you? That is our secretary there. She's gone in. And she has the applications for membership. Now, we ask you to join because this will accord you the means for you to start on the road to making the preparation on coming back home. Our membership fee, we're given a special discount. I would like, uh, 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 it's on a yearly basis. Uh, uh, Bumani can explain to you uh, what uh, discount rate that we're giving them. But what I'm trying to tell you, that if you are serious about having a plan B in motion, now is the time to make the commitment. And we are here to help you. And as the brother just said a moment ago, we're not, we're not, we work directly with the office of the president. We have the track record to show that we have gotten Africans of the diaspora their citizenship 2016, given the right to return, which gave impotence to 2019, the year of return. Now it's giving impotence to beyond the return. Now, why can't you be a part of Beyond the Return? So, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to talk much more. I've said a lot and I have a lot more to say, but I think what the most important thing is, is for you to get the message that Ministry of the Future, which is the NGO that I am the founder and chairperson of, is the foremost organization, as Brother Diabetes said, that actually work with government to break the ice and stop the nonsense of us just coming as tourists and let government know that we want to get something for our money. Amen. And the best way we get something for our money, we want a piece of the land. And there's plenty of land here. And let me tell you, you can drop a seed on the soil here and the brother will tell you because he's in the farm. We have two to three growing seasons within the year. The soil is so fertile. 
If anybody said that they're starving in Africa, it's propaganda. They got wild banana trees all over. They got wild, I don't know, you, you don't know what plantain, plantain, plantains are. They got, these are the big, huge, like bananas. They give you a lot of protein. We got wild avocados, they grow wild. We got wild mangoes. If you go to the eastern region, you'll see miles and miles and miles. Big, juicy mango trees. You understand what I'm saying? We got 750 kilometers of shoreline, fish. So, I mean, why stay in a decrepit situation and cry and, and, and you know what I mean, render yourself to being shot down like a dog in the street when you have the Garden of Eden, sunshine 13 months out of the year. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it doesn't even make sense for you to be suffering there. But now, in the past, you didn't know. But you no longer can say you don't know. Because Milana is telling you tonight, you do know. Ghana can be your home. So let us start tonight in making that first step in the thousand mile journey on making your way back home and ministry of the future under my leadership will assist you in every way that we can to help you. So ladies and gentlemen, I think I've said at least on my presentation enough on that. I would like to open up the floor and I, know, I would hope that some of you have some questions that you would like to ask. And let me ask uh, Bishop, did Drummo come tonight? Yeah, no. Where is he? You see, I, I wanted to introduce, because uh, let me just tell you this. One of the things that I want you to know is that when you come, and if you read the pamphlet that the secretary has passed out to you, I know it's a lot of things you have to think about. Let me just give you a brief. You can be sitting in your home in Georgia, wherever, the Carolinas, California, Chicago, whatever, New York, and you want to you know, how can I come back to Ghana? They've said that Ghana's borders are open to Africans of the diaspora. Well, Ministry of the Future can help you. You first just come and let us help you to rent, not just buy, don't come to buy first because we got land scams here like we have land scams around the world. But Ministry of the Future will cushion you from that. Beautiful, beautiful apartments. None of that nonsense that you see where open trenches and where they got apartments here to match anything in Beverly Hills. I don't know if you had a chance to view the city. There are areas here where you got apartments, <laughs> believe me, houses that will match anything in Beverly Hills. We have one sister here from Detroit, Michigan. She retired as a school teacher after 32 years. She moved right on the beachfront and her property right now is worth five million U.S. dollars. And she would tell you, I could never accumulate that in Detroit, Michigan. I mean, you can come here and have your paradise. So we, we have a building contractor that works with us, Ministry of the Future. I mean, honest, I'm not talking about someone that tries to bamboozle you. I'm talking about someone that's honest and registered with the office of the president. Uh, what they call a state housing bill. We have that as a part of the package. Meaning that we could help you, like if you're sitting there, you wanna come, we say, okay, come and spend two weeks here and rent a flat, well, a flat is an apartment, two bedroom, runs you about $250, $250 a month. But they require you pay a year in advance. But that's yours, and you could even sublet it. That gives you a resident so we can work with your paperwork to start the process for you to get a resident permit. So that is on the road for you to relocate. Ministry of the Future can help you with that. You don't have to be going up and down, up and down, what am I going to do? How can I come to Ghana? How can I get a house? Uh, how much is going to cost me? We could put all of that right on WhatsApp, send you a text message and tell you what you need. So that's why I encourage you to become a member of the organization so we can help you in the process. And I reiterate again, you know, if it's not so much for you, think about that. But think about your children. Think about your grandchildren. Make the way for them. Because nobody has to tell you what they have done to our generation 
Do you not think they would do that to the next generation if you don't do something about it? Nothing, the sister just told you, nothing is going to change. If you think it's going to change, you're dreaming. What needs to change is you. That's what the change is, and I'm giving you the option. This is the Garden of Eden. I'm telling you, I don't have to worry about no boots, overcoat, snow. I get up in the morning, I want a fresh pineapple, and we got sweet old pineapples here. You haven't tasted the pineapple from here yet. No, no, they're shaped like a cone. Oh, my goodness. They, they make dole and Del Monte put them to shame. Put them to shame. <laughs> so we have all of that here. But, you know, CNN and all these news media, they'll tell you people walking around with swollen bellies, flies all over them. I don't, I admit, we have poverty. Obviously, if somebody has come to your land and, and, and raped it, ripped it to shreds, they're going to leave poverty. But we don't have that in the mainstream. If you, if Bomani could take you through some of the residential Hollywood type, type housing here, you would think you're in Beverly Hills. And these are owned by black folks, Ghanaians. Or like yourself. So with a pension, if you retire, a pension of $1,000 a month can make you live like a queen or a king here. $1,000 a month is almost 6,000 cities. And the average Ghanaian is only making about maybe 600 cities a month. And you're talking about 1,000 cities, I mean $1,000 you get for your pension a month. That's almost 6,000 cities. And 6,000 cities here can go a long ways. You know what I mean? So, and many are on pensions above $1,000 a month. So why go back and spend your last days looking over your shoulder to see whether he's coming after you or not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> why don't you just come and lay back and let people do the things for you that you normally would have to do for yourself. You can pay people to do these things for you. It's unheard of here for an elder to be lifting things. I'm sorry, we have maid service. Everybody puts to work. And with a, with a pension of $1,000 a month, you can afford to have a maid. You can afford to have a house bought. So I'm saying to you, let Ministry of the Future give you the roadmap to show you how to relocate here. You have no business suffering a day longer after what I have told you tonight. If you decide to go back and you're gonna, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna tour it out and say, oh Jesus, I know things are gonna get better. I pray that they do. The sister just told you, you're dreaming. It's going to get worse. But why would you sit there and allow for it to get worse? Especially if you have children and grandchildren. Make the way for them because if you don't, you will have to answer to the great power of the universe when your time comes. Why did you not make ready for that that comes after you, the generations in your children? And that's what I'm saying. This message that I'm giving you tonight is all about that. So ladies and gentlemen, let me stop here now, and I'm going to open up the floor, and I thank you for your time. May God bless you. The questions. Yes. 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 Everybody coming, and this is serious business. I appreciate you, brother, Dr. Malani. Prayer to remember you and I talking in 2006, but uh, you've been a great inspiration. Uh, a few other people that uh, journeyed with me in December uh, 2020 um, joined membership, and they gave me some great feedback of how they stayed back for a few months. And my brother and his whole crew and his friends uh, just took care of them, from and they all and they all got their resident permits, so they was able to do all the business and things that they needed to do, but they was able to get it at a very quick process. So a lot of times when we come here and we're trying to do certain things, and we're trying to just go down to immigration to ourselves and do certain things, it becomes a little or beyond challenging. So this is what we have to just make things easy, and that's our whole process as we begin to build more of a network. And I have two applications here filled out. It only took a few minutes to fill out. And uh, once I, uh, we end the uh, recording, I'll tell everybody the, the numbers and things like that. Uh, that way there's no confusion on our recording. So you can give your mind right now when you fill it out. Okay. So uh, <laughs> when you look at application, and you know, definitely correct me if I'm uh, wrong, Dr. Milana, it shows uh, $100 um, for membership if you have a Ghana resident permit. 
Now, um, most of us, or all of us, I should say, including myself, uh, don't have a resident permit, so the deal is uh, 250 for U.S. dollars for membership, and all the things that Dr. Milano talked about, getting help with as far as your citizenship, your resident permit, and so on, find a place to live, relocate, and then all the connections that you actually literally need, um, that's uh, what the membership is for. And it's a, you know, it's a part of just uh, giving them all of the resources they need to just go out there and fight. And I mean, this, you're talking about a true warrior. So a lot of us don't get the credit that we get for doing things, but all of our energy has made things a lot easier for the rest of us to come. Uh, so I, I want to say uh, the, the number we talked about was 150, right, instead of 250. So we appreciate you. That would definitely help. You can use it extra hundred and, and spend some of that in Ghana. So what are you saying is that we're, because of your group in Bomani, that it's been cut. And usually if you're not a resident, it's 250. And we're just defraying 100 off that, so it's 150 for that. And believe me, I think with the work that we do on the ground here, for 12 months in helping you, it's worth it, believe me. And then you can look at the positive things. A few years from now, example, like two to three years, you get, you'll get that call and then you'll be in the line like so many other people, like everyone that me and David know, they're all citizens. I'm like one of the few people that's not. But you just got to fill out, but the issue is, if you don't fill out the paperwork and don't have someone processing it for you, years will go by, and I could have been right here with David because we've been talking about this for a while. So I made a positive note today to just make sure that I take, took care of it for me and my son. And um, so just leading by example this time versus what I did the last time, which is this, uh, uh, you know, use a, ask a few people to just do the process and let's get some feedback. Because um, I just wasn't ready at that time. But um, yeah, so that's what I want to share, family. So appreciate everybody coming. And um, you want everyone who has questions, just come right here and ask a question. Yeah, that, that's perfect. You just come on up right here, and then we'll pass you the mic. And I just wanted to know, uh, well, how long, if you take the membership, how long does it last? Suppose well, you're not ready to come right now. Yeah, I, I know. What, what it is, the membership application goes for 12 months, but we tediously and expediently start working on what your needs are in that 12 months. And if you have not been satisfied the things that need to be done in the 12 months, there's no need for you to pay anything additional. We are on it. Yes, we are on it. All right. Yes. All right. And the next. Oh. Bye, I'll see you. You can, you can tell us your name also. Sure. Uh, you can come on up and come close. That's all oh, good. Sure. Yeah. And uh, you can turn that way, whichever sure, way you feel comfortable. Sure, good evening, everyone. My name is Nakia. I met Bumani through my uh, boyfriend, Duncan, in the back. And uh, my question to you, first, thank you. I, I just was a tag along to the conference. But I've actually been here since the New Year's. This is my second visit to the country, to the continent in general. Um, and I was moved by your talk, even some of the facts that you threw out. I didn't even know. As a person who feels like they're kind of in tune with some of these things, right? So I just want to know a little bit about the just, if you can kind of outline the general process. Um, the steps that you actually have to go through if you move into citizenship, and how much should you start setting aside for that process? All the paperwork. While you're in the you U.S., you mean? Yeah, trying to yeah. relocate, okay. Yeah, like I'm sure there's costs right, associated, so how much do you think you should be thinking about setting aside to take care of all the document processing, and how long does it usually kind of take? Okay, you, know, okay. you want me to answer to that right now? Yeah. yeah. What, what I would say, what's your name again? Nakia. Nakia, what I would say is this, that you join Ministry of the Future, that's the first thing, you become a member, because we can't help you until you join. Mm -hmm. Once you pay the fee, mm -hmm. then we advise you, you want to relocate, we can find you the type house or apartment, and I mean state of the art, mm -hmm. um, and, and security, in a secure area, mm -hmm where you're not going to be in harm's way. Mm -hmm. And we would ask you to visit. So be prepared to have, like you come now, a plane ticket. Mm -hmm. You come and spend two weeks. And we, when you come, we will start the process for your resident permit and everything. And we will get your flat. You understand what I'm saying? If you decide to leave it in the hands of someone you know here or somewhere, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Then you go back and start making your way back there, because you have to go back there and start making your way to get ready to make the next Maybe you may have to make one or two trips. Usually it may be about 
some people just make one. They, they, they decide they one way and that's it. But it, it is usual and customary that you come first, spend two weeks here, come to us, come to our office, we work with you, get everything set. And then you have to go back and take care of whatever you have to do there. And we will watch over your affairs here. And then when you're ready to come and relocate permanently, boom, your paperwork and everything is ready for you. Okay. So I'm very, so I came here because I do business here. So I, I figured I'd talk to you too. It's probably invited. I do service departments here. So I have fully furnished departments. And I started my first one in Ghana. I've been doing it in the States for six years now. Um, and we'll be expanding. So maybe we can talk after this. Um, and give me your contact, please. I will, yeah. yeah. That's probably why you told me to come. Yeah. Uh, are you interested in becoming a member of the organization so yeah. we can help you? Yeah. Well, uh, once again, I'd say that our secretary, and about patience. patience, she has the application. Okay. And uh, Bomani, because you're coming with this group, uh, you're not a citizen and you're, you're not a resident rather right here, but we are the friend cutting, uh, I believe, 100 off of that. And for you guys, it's 150. 150. Okay. Yes, but leave your contact so I can uh, communicate with you, especially if you're into interior, interior decorating, you said? Uh, I do actually do interior decorating too. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 well, I, I'm with yeah. an estate housing, uh, uh -huh. <coughs> excuse me, estate housing construction company. Okay. And we, we build mm -hmm. state-of-the-art houses mm -hmm. for the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And, I, I you, and we'll be able to see you. Here. Yeah, no, we're, you've seen them. Yeah, we'll yeah. be able to show you the, the brochures. You people may think that I'm, I'm exaggerating, but I am telling you, on a pension of a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars a month, you can live like a queen and a king. Excuse me, Nomo. Go ahead, my brother. <laughs> yes, brother Nomo. I'd like to give a testimony. All right. It took me 27 years for me and my wife and my dog to come here and live. 27 years. My wife and I, we came here in September. We did not find a place to stay. I joined, I paid $250. My wife paid $250 because we were not residents. Talked to Dr. Milana. We got a place to stay, three bedrooms, four baths, $5,000 a year. That's a testimony. $420 a month, three bedrooms, four would you, baths. Would you tell them the size of your rooms? <laughs> They're larger than, but I have, I have 4,300 square feet in America. I got 5,600 square feet here. And it's all new, it's all modern, and it's wonderful. So I'm just giving a testimony as to the work that was done. We were not able to find what we wanted. My wife went back, we found what, we, found what we wanted. I went back and got her, and the doll. My wife wasn't coming without the doll. Okay, so you know we came to state if she brought the dog. That's the testimony. Thank you. The mic is still open for anyone that wants to ask questions or make a comment, please. I'd like to make a comment. But I do encourage you, get your application to join Ministry of the Future so we can help. Yes, sir. Hey, good evening, family. I've been here for approximately five months. And the initial thing that I did was to sign up with Ministry of the Future. And the reason is, is that Dr. Molana has a proven track record of getting people's citizenship. Proven, though. Proven, he's the one that broke the ice to get African American citizenship here in Ghana. And now, in this 21st century, is the most crucial time in history for us to make the exodus out of America. So this is a very significant move that he has made in preparing to receive us to make our exodus possible. You know, do not 
freak out about the number, even if it was $500, pay that money, you know, and move on this, initiate the particular process because America is collapsing. And as he stated, we have to have a plan B right now, right now for us and our family. So initiate that process, man. Don't hesitate on it. This is the most important investment that you can make in your lifetime that's worth more than anything else that you could ever possibly invest in. So don't take this lightly. You know, this is a very serious move for your survival and the survival of your bloodline on this planet at this time. So take heed now, take heed. This is very serious. This is the, the initial movement. I didn't hesitate on it. I didn't hesitate. They say how much it was. I paid the money. I filled out the application. I submitted it immediately because I wanted to get in line because he has a proven track record now, proven. This man, Ator David, I live with him. He has gotten his citizenship to this particular process. All right, that's a testimony for me because, man, I want no part of America. I never intend to cross the Atlantic again, right? I'm here in Africa permanently. <laughs> And I have faith in his process, and it, it, don't, it don't even require faith because it's proven already. Proven. He's gotten people citizenship. hundred and uh, more than a hundred people, right? And, and if I can just tell you right now, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, that's the truth. Uh, hundred and twenty-four, as I speak to you right now, effectively on the fourteenth of May government has decided for them to go forward. They are Ministry of the Future's applicants. So we got another 124 that are in the process right now of becoming Ghanaian citizens. So once again, you know, I can't overstress the importance like the brother just said a moment ago, and our elder sister said a moment ago, and these are profound words. The voice of the people is the voice of God. And if the elders, especially elders, not young people, but if elders get up and tell you that I've been through the fire and I don't see the situation getting any better, it's going to get worse, then you have to ask yourself, don't be selfish. If not for you, what about your children? If not for your immediate children, what about your grandchildren? You should be in the making right now of having a plan B for your family if anything breaks out. And Ministry of the Future is opening the door for you here in Ghana. And there are other African countries too that we are working with that are ready to receive you. So please, I would like right now to tell you another dimension of the work that we're doing in terms, because if you come here, eventually after you get your apartment, you're gonna want to get your home. You know, everyone wants to have their own, their own land and their home. And we have it here, you can do that but you've got to go through the protocol, the proper procedure. Now, I would like to point to one Mr. Owosu Dankwa, our elder in the back. Mr. Dankwa, can you come up? He's a Ghanaian. This is someone that worked for over a generation at the Lands Commission. So if you're gonna get some land here, we have him in reserve to make sure that you do not get cheated on you getting land because he can go through it with a magnifying glass to see that it's free and clear without you having any problem. So just say a couple of words to the audience, please, Mr. Don Kwan. He will be, he will be speaking at the conference tomorrow. I cry about to all of you. You all welcome to Ghana. Uh, Brother David has been organizing this series of investment lectures for the past 10 to 15 years. And every year I'm on board. So those who have been coming regularly, when they can, they enjoy my talks on land. Because before you do anything, before you settle, you have to settle on land. You can't be on the air. But in our country here, there are a lot of problems in the acquisition of land and all those things. So tomorrow, I think I'll open up for everybody to have a clear mind as to how to go about acquiring properties through the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and with my support. Thank you very much. Right. And before you sit down, I want you to verify the fact. About four weeks ago, at the 11th hour, 
Now listen to this. Uh, African American, I've, I've never seen him before, even today, but we've talked over the phone. The man called me, I won't call his name, but he's out of Chicago. And he's invested $500,000 in property in the eastern region. And as he put up the house, he had to go back to America, you know what I mean, to get things in order. He left the property with the house boy. And then after a, a certain amount of time he came back, things had changed. His property had been possessed by the house boy, and they were taking it to claim that it was theirs. So the man called me, and uh, he was like, uh, in other words, you can imagine, he's about 70-something 70, 70 years of age. He was in Iraq. I mean, this is the man's life savings, and it's about 550000 what can I do? I call this man because the man told me that the Lands Commission in the area where he lives say that they cannot see a record belonging to him of that property, in spite of the fact that he had paperwork. So the long and the short of what I'm trying to say, I call Mr. Owosu Dankwa and put him in the trust of this man. And he worked with him for a couple of weeks or so to find out that the man truly owns that property. And that property now is to be given back to him through the process. Is that not so? That is correct. Amen. That is correct. So this is a very important. So we try to cover you on all fronts, is what I'm saying. So ladies and gentlemen, I ask you again to encourage you. Thank you very much, my brother. <laughs> I ask you again. Uh, take up membership in Ministry of the Future, and we will start the process. You know what I mean? It's, it's for a validity period of 12 months, but in that time, we will give you the roadmap and blueprint to show you how to relocate and to help you with getting the proper housing that you will need. Because let me tell you, some of our people, I'm, I'm, I'm very... I'm very sad to say some of our people got such hard heads. They don't listen. They come, oh, I'm so happy to be back in Africa, kissing the sauce. And you must understand, we got fast talking Kwaku and fast talking Kwame who's waiting for you to come. Yeah. I probably, I probably, welcome home, my brothers and my sisters. How much money do you have? <laughs> <laughs> you understand? They're here. Just like we got fast talking idiots in New York, in California. But our people don't listen. They feel that they can come back here, don't even have a resident permit, and buy in land. Because in Ghana, the Constitution says you don't have to be a citizen to buy land. But just think about that. You got nothing but a visa. And you're going spending tens of thousands of dollars buying land, and you say this is your land. And you go back to the States thinking that everything is in order. The first time you have a provocation with someone here, all they have to do is run down to immigration and report you. You are undocumented and all of your investment is gone down the drain. So you got to do the proper protocol. And that is what Ministry of the Future is helping you to do. Yes. And let nobody else tell you there's somebody else here that can help you to do it. They're liars. All of them, the charlatans and liars, they jump up and tell you that they can do this and do that. We've been here 42 years. It took over 28 years to bring us to where we are right now. We got some people who just come here for the last three, four, five years trying to tell you they can do this and do that. All right, go with them. Then you see where you're going. They'll take you nowhere. You understand what I'm saying? So ladies and gentlemen, once again, I encourage you to join Ministry of the Future and let us move forward together. If there's any other question, the floor is still open. Please. Thank you. Thank you. I signed up and I'm grateful for Bomani for bringing me here, for helping me to get here to Africa. It's my first time in Africa. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, so, and I'm glad that the uh, MOF exists and saved me a whole lot of heartache. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Um, number one, you don't have to worry about um, um, the investment requirement. You know, uh, to be an investor here, you need almost five hundred thousand dollars just to get a residence permit. That's what he was talking about when he was saying it's not easy. Um, you have to pay a thousand dollars just to register, and then you only get one um, one residence permit, and you got to pay all of that money just to register your business, just to get citizenship. But now, you're, once you register, your name is going to be submitted to the government for citizenship, which means that you can get a visa, you get your passport. You go to America with your American passport, you come back with your Ghana passport, and you get in the line for citizenship. You don't have to get a visa. When I was, in a, when I was traveling on the American passport, some place charged me $400 just for a visa. $160 for a visa. I got on the plane a few months ago, I went to Liberia. Um, I didn't have to get a visa. I didn't have to get coming back, got in the citizenship line. It was sweet. Mm -hmm. I think that he needs to explain to you the benefit of what he's talking about. He is a citizen of Ghana. We have a United States of West Africa. Right. Meaning 19, that there are about 15 states. 19. 19, 19, 19 states, yes. ECOWAS. And meaning once you become a citizen of either one of them, you have the right to do business in all of them and go in and out. Right. So this way, and they need everything in these countries here, even toothpicks, Absolutely. toilet paper. Absolutely. I mean, you can come from America and you can start a business here within six months, capuche, you're gone. I have, I have a 50-acre farm in, in the central region. Um, we have uh, guest houses. We're growing all kinds of food. You are invited in the future. Uh, I bought properties when I first came here. But I had to have the security of doing the right thing to protect. Because if you don't protect what you have, it's like not having it. You see, so no one can ever steal this 50 acre land because I've registered through the land department and they've given me the deed. It wasn't easy, but you gotta have some experts working with you and guiding you. But it's sweet to have, to be able to jump on a plane without a visa. I used to go to Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria. I have to, they wouldn't even give me a visa in Nigeria unless I had resident permit in Ghana. Cote d'Ivoire gave me a hard time. But now I can go to any of these 19 countries just like that. Just like that. And I can go to America and, and, and come back to Ghana. I can go there as a Ghanaian. Can, can, can I interject something? Yeah, go ahead. I'm not cutting it. But I know what Diabetes is saying because I was with Diabetes. Like he said, he's known me since 1990. Nice. Yes. I remember Diabetes would just be walking humble because he knew that his papers were not in order. And you could be grabbed any time and deported. And so he was just quietly doing this, selling the empty clock. But when Diabetes got his citizenship, Oh, he's going, roll! Oh, so stand got, up, my people. We, we got, got 50 acres. Yeah. For someone to tell you they got 50 acres of land, can anybody in America tell you he's got 50 acres of land? No. Frontal land. Right. I mean, know, this right. brother's not running around beating us just like he's some uh, Howard Hughes or Rockefeller, but 50 acres of land. You can have that here. I'm telling you. And we got the herbs too. This is my new book, Healing and Rejuvenating Herbs of Africa. We got we brought some here to heal you. Not only are we here um, as a citizen, but we're here to make a difference by growing food and, and making sure that we don't have to take no vaccine because the sun is the vaccine and these herbs is the vaccine. And we got them here. So we, we are here to serve Africa and you have to serve Africa. You have skills and understanding. And trust me, the government is waiting for you to come and I don't ever have to worry about money, okay? I'm beyond money, okay? My, my property is, is priceless because every time I plant a tree, it grows for a thousand of years. I can sit on an avocado tree right now and eat avocado for the next hundred years. So we're going to get ready to close out. No, let, yeah. let me interject something because I think this crowd uh, brothers and sisters need to know right. about where you are. He just mentioned something about health and how healthy it is to be in this area. I want to share something with you just a moment. You may not know this, that we are at the equator. Uh, Ghana is at the equator. We're about five degrees above the equator, and we're in the center of the Earth, and where the electromagnetic field of the sun that blisses the Earth. 
it shines more in this area and it rests more in this area than any other area in the world. And it's been proven that COVID-19 cannot survive in this area. Mm. And I'm telling you, Big point. It, cannot, it cannot survive in this area. The same thing with other viruses that they have put out. If you notice, they have never sustained themselves. They've never been able to sustain themselves. And the reason is, is because of the electromagnetic field of the radiation of the sun. And these viruses cannot withstand the radiation that blisses this area. So I want to tell you, it's a great benefit to try to get down to the equator because they got COVID-19 now. When you go back, even before you get there, you may hear about COVID-20. Then they got COVID-21. And they're going all the way up to COVID-100 until they finish the job. So come home where you will not be subject to that. Believe me. Great. So we're going to close out this session and then, okay, we'll take this last question and then we're going to close out. Come on, my sister. And we're going to close out and then you can sign up and then you can, we can network. And then we're going to get ready tomorrow for the big expo, uh, business expo. Greetings, fam. My Greetings. name is Sheila, and um, I live in Atlanta. And I'm really thankful that finally there is an organization that we as Africans in America can say, we know that y'all have our back because it's been a journey, and a lot of us are still angry at Africa because Africa didn't come and get us. And so my feeling is this. I want to know in regards to the citizenship whether or not you have to denounce your citizenship in America. Okay. Because if you do, and I'm a senior, I'm an elder, right. they keep your social security check. If you denounce your citizenship, you can't get your money. Right. That's the point. Yeah, let me answer that. Thank Hold you. it. Uh, Ghana has an agreement. It's been happening. Many of the Africans of the diaspora, as I speak right now, mm -hmm. you can have dual citizenship. Keep your American citizenship as well as Ghanaian well, citizenship. Well, sign me up. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm telling you the truth. No, I'm we saying have the truth. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an yeah. issue. People right. they, they don't they, know that. They, they, don't they had the American ambassador, the president of Ghana, in, invited the American ambassador to the uh, uh, to, to this uh, the giving of the um, the, the award swearing in, yeah. and they and the 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 ambassador. One of our sisters works at the embassy. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, what they're saying is that what they like he said, you can have dual citizenship. But they, what the American government is saying that we, they like for you to travel on your American passport. They prefer that, but it's not mandatory. Oh, okay. It's not mandatory. But and that's written. That's but it's, it's, yeah, there's an agreement. Written. It has to be written. There's right. an agreement between Ghana right. government and the United Listen, States. Right. Yeah. Some okay. people got three citizenship. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, okay. some of the people, you know, because you can buy citizenship in certain countries. Even America sells citizenship, whether you know it or not. If you got enough money, the American government will say As a senior citizen, let me. Let me dilate just a little bit. Oh, yeah. No, you can yeah. Uh, no, you can sit up, please. Let me dilate just as a senior citizen uh, of the uh, African American community in Ghana, and we have, uh, uh, it probably is above 15 to 20,000. Uh, in 2016, the African American Association of Ghana said there was about 7,000 then. But I know it's way above that. But nevertheless, what I'm saying. Uh, Ministry of the Future has done a statistical analysis of the number of Africans of the diaspora, particularly African Americans who are here. And 80% of African Americans that are here are on pension and above the age of 45. You understand what I'm saying? We want to get more young people to come, but the ones who are here are all on pension. They are, in other words, they are financially, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, stable. They are. They're getting their retirement checks, um, and many of them got dual citizenship, and they're living a beautiful life. Li living much better than you would be living with all the headache and strain and stress in America. Uh, am I wrong? Uh, no, uh, with the strain, the stress, and looking over your shoulder in the morning, looking over your shoulder in the evening. I'm not saying this is uh, a panacea. And I'm not saying that, you know, we don't have problems here. And the problems that we do have here, they were brought from outside anyway. But you don't have the problems here nowhere near what you have in America. Yes, sir. But the, the key thing is, senior citizens, there's the respect that you give here that you don't even know. We never had it in America. And every day, 
I just feel so wonderful. I go to the bank. They take me to the front of the line. Yeah. Right. And you get a, if you get on a bus and you got gray hair, it's embarrassing. The bus, every is so choked at working out. You know, somebody gets up and say, please, sir, Baba, they say, Baba, or Papa, take my seat. Uh, would that happen in America? No. <laughs> okay, family, so, you know, the night is well spent, so we like you to, you know, sign up. We're going to close out now, so let's give yourself a round of applause. Yes, a round of applause. And then, uh, Thank you very much for your time. Please enjoy yourself while you're here.